Falkland Islands War, also called Malvinas War or South Atlantic War, is a brief undeclared war fought between Argentina and Great Britain in 1982 over control of the Malvinas Islands and associated island dependencies. Argentina had claimed sovereignty over the Falkland Islands, which lie 300 miles east of its coast since the early 19th century. But Britain seized the islands in 1833, expelling the few remaining Argentine occupants, and since then consistently rejected Argentina's claims. In early 1982, the Argentine military junta led by Lieutenant General Leopoldo Galtieri gave up on long-running negotiations with Britain and instead launched an invasion of the islands. The decision to invade was chiefly political. The junta, which was being criticized for economic mismanagement and human rights abuses, believed that the recovery of the islands would unite Argentines behind the government in a patriotic fervor. An elite invasion force, which was trained in secrecy but its timetable was shortened on March 19, when a dispute erupted on British-controlled South Georgia Island, where Argentine salvage workers had raised the Argentine flag 800 miles east of the Falklands, naval forces were quickly mobilized. Argentine troops invaded the Falklands on April 2 rapidly overcoming the small garrison of British marines at the capital Port Stanley. They obeyed orders not to inflict any British casualties despite losses to their own units. The next day, Argentine marines seized the associated islands of South Georgia. By late April, Argentina had stationed more than 10,000 troops on the Falklands, although the vast majority of these were poorly trained conscripts and they were not supplied with proper food clothing and shelter for the approaching winter. In response to the invasion, the British government under Prime Minister Margaret Thatcher declared a war zone for 200 miles around the Falklands. The government quickly assembled a naval task force built around two aircraft carriers and two cruise ships. The carriers sailed from Portsmouth on April 5 and were reinforced en route. Most European powers voiced support for England, and European military advisors were withdrawn from Argentine bases. However, most Latin American governments sympathized with Argentina. A notable exception was Chile, which maintained in a state of alert against its neighbor because of a dispute over islands in the Beagle Channel. The perceived threat from Chile prompted Argentina to keep most of its elite troops on the mainland distant from the Falkland Theatre. On April 25th, while the British task force was steaming 8,000 miles to the war zone by Ascension Island, a smaller British force retook South Georgia Island. On May 2nd, the obsolete Argentina cruiser General Belgrano was sunk outside the war zone by a British nuclear-powered submarine. Following this controversial event, most other Argentine ships were kept in port and the Argentine Navy's contribution was limited to its naval air force and one of its newer German-made submarines. The latter posed more of a threat to the British fleet than was expected, launching torpedo attacks that narrowly failed. Meanwhile, the British naval force and the land-based Argentine air forces fought pitched battles. Argentine aircraft consisted mainly of several dozen old US and French fighter bombers armed only with conventional high explosive bombs and lacking electronic countermeasures or radar for acquiring targets. In addition, the Argentine Navy had recently taken delivery of a few new French-made Super Etendard attack aircraft armed with the newest Exocet anti-ship missiles. Though only a handful in number, these proved particularly deadly. Because the Falklands were at the extreme edge of the Argentine aircraft's combat radius, the planes could take only one pass at the task force. British ships therefore remained out of range except when closing in to attack Argentine position. For the British, the problem was their dependence on two aircraft carriers, as the loss of one would almost certainly have forced withdrawal. Air cover was limited to perhaps 20 Harrier naval jets armed with air-to-air -air missiles. To compensate the lack of long-range air cover, a screening force of destroyers and frigates was stationed ahead of the fleet to serve as radar pickets. 
However, not all of them were armed with full anti-aircraft systems or closing weapons for shooting down incoming missiles. This left the British ships vulnerable to attack and on May 4th, the Argentines sacked the destroyer Sheffield with an Exocet missile. The Argentines meanwhile lost some 20 to 30 percent of their planes. From the beachhead at Port San Carlos, the British infantry advanced rapidly southward through forced marches under extremely adverse weather conditions to capture the settlements of Darwin and Goose Green. After several days of hard fighting, some of it hand to hand, against determined Argentine troops dug in along several ridge lines, the British succeeded in taking and occupying the high ground west of Stanley. With British forces surrounding and blockading the capital and main port, it was clear that the large Argentine garrison there was cut off and could be starved out. Menendez therefore surrendered on June 14th, effectively ending the conflict. The British captured some 11,400 Argentine prisons during the war. Argentina announced that about 650 lives had been lost, while Britain lost 255. Military strategists have debated key aspects of the conflict, but have generally underscored the roles of submarines and anti-ship missiles. The war also illustrated the importance of air superiority. Logistic support was vital as well, because the armed forces of both countries had operated at their maximum ranges. Thank you for watching, and don't forget to subscribe to our channel.